I'm Dr. Tom Brown. Uh, I teach in the Department of Psychiatry at the Yale Medical School. And I'm the editor of a book called ADHD Comorbidities, a handbook for complications in children and adults with ADD. And it looks like this. This is a book that we put together to try to address the problem that many clinicians have in dealing with complicated cases of ADD. Recent research has shown that an adult with ADHD, or ADD, you can use the two terms interchangeably, has six times the likelihood of having at least one other psychiatric disorder sometime in his or her life. It doesn't mean it's going to be persistent throughout life, but the fact is that ADHD rarely occurs alone. Most people with ADD or ADHD uh, suffer at some point in their lives from a learning disability, anxiety disorder, mood disorder, obsessive compulsive disorder, substance abuse, or any one of a wide variety of other psychiatric problems. There's something about the nature of this disorder that means that it often occurs in combination with other disorders. And so what we've done in this book is to get the best experts we could find in the world to deal with each one of these particular combinations, ADD and anxiety disorders, ADD and sleep disorders, ADD and learning disorders, ADD and mood disorders, ADD and substance abuse, and so forth. And in 23 chapters, each of these combinations of ADD and another disorder is presented, the research on it summarized, and the implications of that research for how one goes about treating are described in practical detail so that clinicians will have this information at their fingertips in order to be able to deal with these more complicated cases that often present in clinics. Sometimes the person comes in presenting with complaints about ADD, and other times, it may be a person who has a depression, who just doesn't seem to be responding to the usual treatment, or who looks like they're suffering from borderline personality disorder and may have an underlying ADD. And what we've realized is that the old notion of ADD as simply a behavior disorder really doesn't fit the evidence that we've got. And nowadays, we understand ADD from a new paradigm, which basically is to say, that this is not so much a behavior disorder because there are many people who have ADD who've never had any significant behavior problems. Rather, it's a developmental impairment of the management system of the brain, the executive functions. The first chapter of the book begins by talking about how this new paradigm has developed and how our understanding of the disorder has changed. And how now we're beginning to think of this not so much as just one disorder among the many different disorders, but rather as a foundational disorder that cross-cuts many other diagnoses. One way of thinking about it is that it's a lot like having a problem with the operating system of your computer, which impacts a whole variety of other software packages that you may want to run, as distinguished from some other disorders, which are more like a problem in a software package that only affects a fairly narrow range of functioning. There are chapters in the book that talk about how ADHD looks different in preschoolers or in elementary school age kids or in adolescents or in adults. There are other chapters in the book that talk about assessment and treatment of ADHD, particularly 